What's up, my producer friends? I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. Everybody's been talking about Vital, the new synth by Matt Titel. He's the guy who created Helm. I did a video on that synth a while back, but this synth is, in my opinion, way better. Uh, it's, it's actually really amazing and you can get it for free. So he actually has a couple different options for this synth that you can choose from. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but I do want to mention that if you are brand new to synthesis and sound design, you may want to check out my introduction to synthesis and sound design series. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video to that if you want to check that out. Now that is going to help you get caught up to the point where everything that I talk about in this video you should be able to understand pretty well. It's just really important to understand the basics of sound design in order to understand synths a lot better. Now Vital is a wavetable synth and before we dive into the actual synthesizer I just want to mention that if you go to vital.audio you can download this synth for free, as I mentioned before. Uh, there's also some various other information on this website, which will give you some more information about the synth and about some of the different capabilities that this synth can do, as well as show you the different plans available. So you have a subscribe plan, a free, which is what I currently have now. Then you have a plus version, which comes with more presets and more wavetables. And then you have a pro version, which comes with even more presets, even more wavetables, unlimited text to wavetables, tables, which is a really cool feature that this plugin offers. I'll definitely get into that in this tutorial. Uh, exclusive Discord perk and then prioritize support. Now this is what the synth is going to look like when you have it loaded up in your DAW. Uh, there's just a couple things I want to mention before we kind of dive into how to actually use the synth. Uh, so first of all, you can resize it by going down to the right bottom right hand corner down here and dragging or clicking here and you can resize it this way. I'll just leave it on 70% for now. Now the first thing that you're gonna probably wanna do when you get the synth loaded up is go ahead and click here where it says init preset, and this is gonna open up our separate preset tab, which is where you can scroll through all the different presets that you have access to. So I have actually made my own, a few of my own custom presets here, and I've made 10 of them. So I'm gonna be giving away those in the description of this video if, as well. So if you guys wanna download those presets along with you know the rest of the presets that come with it, Hopefully that'll you know help you out, inspire you to get creative in this synth or whatever. You'll have some presets to mess with. So we can go ahead and click some of these. Let's just go ahead and test them out. Also down here, you may notice we have the ability to search for presets and also sort based on category, which is always really handy in a synth, uh, makes it really easy on us. Whenever we're done finding the synth that we want, we can just go up here to the top left, go ahead and exit out of that. Now, let's say I wanna start a new preset from scratch. I can go ahead and go back up here, right click, and go to initialize preset, and that's gonna get us a blank slate. We'll be able to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and talk about the oscillators first. So the first thing I wanna mention is that it's really easy in the synth to create your own custom wavetables. If we go into this area here, uh, we can completely shape our, uh, shape our own waves and kind of listen to what they sound like, or you know, can mess with it down here as well. And then I can go over here and create another key keyframe, and uh, I can bring it over here and create like a, a new new shape or a new sound. So then, and then I can also add a ton more different keyframes and get really creative and create my own custom wave shapes that way. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. But now you can see uh, if I go into my 3D mode, I have my own custom wavetable I just made, and I can kinda drag and play that. So that's definitely something that I recommend you mess with, take advantage of. You can create tons of cool, unique sounds just by messing with that tab. Now let's backtrack a little bit and kind of go over the basics of the oscillator section. Uh, first of all, if you wanna turn on an oscillator or turn it off, you can just click this button here. We have three different oscillators and we have a noise oscillator down here. So the noise oscillator works the same as the other oscillators, we just have certain white noise, which is built into the synth. And then we could also import our own noise if we wanted to just by dragging it directly in. So I can kind of browse through here. mess with different noises. And then I have uh, actually some different options here to mess with as well. So this is going to enable it so that I can play different notes on the keyboard.
Otherwise it's just stagnant in the same noise. This right here will put like a random place in the phase. So you can kind of see how it's, it's just starting in a different place there. And this is a sample bounce on. And then this one here, which is automatically on, is a sample loop. Uh, so that means it'll just keep looping over and over again. Otherwise you'll play through it and then it'll stop. So let's go back into our oscillator one. And as with any synth, we're gonna have our basic features such as our level, pan, the ability to change the pitch. This one you can change, I think four octaves, goes all the way down to negative 48 semitones. Um, so yeah, that's four octaves, super low. If I wanna bring it back to zero, I can just double click it. It'll go back to its original default setting. That goes for any parameter within the synth. So I can also change the pitch in sense here. Uh, so this is gonna change the tuning. So it just goes up, I think one semitone or down one semitone. So again, double click to bring it back to zero. We kind of talked a little bit about the waveform. Um, this is pretty standard for a lot of synths, uh, especially if you're familiar with Serum. This looks a lot like Serum. We have a 3D view, we have an SP view, and then we have a 2D view. And as I mentioned before, you can get pretty uh, creative with the synth as far as making your own shapes by going in here. We can also scroll through different wave shapes, wave tables by clicking these buttons here, going back and forth. And then you can also click here and scroll through different wavetables that way as well. We can also uh, change the shape by clicking this here and we have a bunch of different options. So let's just pick a random one, smear. And then I can, I can mess with the waveform by moving this here. So this is pretty cool stuff. And we, like I said, we have tons of different options. So phase. That's kind of cool. Some lo-fi, you can get some weird uh, in and out of tune stuff, harmonic stretch. And then we have another set of options here. So I could do some FMing. Let's do FM from oscillator two, turn oscillator two on. Everyone likes some FMing always fun stuff. Here's where we change the amount of voices. So if I want to, if I want to create like a super saw, it's not really a saw shape right now, but I'll bring the amount of voices up and we can kind of hear what it does. It's kind of a cool sound there. Now the synth by default is set a little bit high in the detuning amount. Uh, I think that between 10 and 15 is pretty good for the detune amount. And here, let me actually just, um, I'm gonna go back to basic shape and we'll just turn this to a, a saw wave. We'll get like a super saw going on here. So this middle section here, I can actually change the, the detune power. So you can kind of see what's happening there. And if you're listening on headphones, especially you'll be able to hear it, how it's kind of bringing it into either more mono or spreading out those voices a little bit more stereo. We also have some phase options here. So this is our phase. I can turn this down or up. If I were to map an LFO or something to this, I can get sort of that analog floating in and out of tune effect. So we can just kind of do that. You can kind of hear that going on. And then we have our phase randomization here. So phase randomization has to do with, um, well here, I'll, I'll play it, you can kind of hear it. So when it's at 0%, it's pretty much all starting at the same position, uh, the super saws, all the different voices are. So it gets kind of this like phased out sound. Whereas if I bring it up to 100% or somewhere in between, it's gonna have more phase randomization where it's starting in different places within the phase, which is gonna make it sound more full and more spread out. Now I do wanna briefly mention also that in the advanced tab, there's a couple more options within the oscillator section. So we have a high res wavetable option. We have some options you can change like the detune range and stuff. Uh, the unison blend, this can be potentially something you, you may find important where, um, so if you have multiple voices and you wanna bring the blend down, it's gonna make it so that all the voices are less blended together with the initial voice going to have here I'll just play it you can kind of hear so it has the main voice centered which you can mainly hear and then the rest of the voices are, are much quieter behind it as I bring it in you can hear more voices and then you can turn it up to 100 where it's just you know 
a bunch of voices all blended in together. Okay, so bring that back to the default. Now we also have the stereo unison. This is just like turning it into mono essentially. Uh, don't really see why you'd want to change that. I guess maybe for sub bass or something. Uh, so we have a table spread, spec spread, and distortion spread as well. You can mess with those all. I mean, you know, these are all sort of more advanced things that just give you a lot of control within the synth. So just something to be aware of. Let's go back into our voicing section and let's move on to our envelope. So our envelope is where we control the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the synth. And similar to how you see in Serum, we can play a note and you'll, you can actually watch on the graph here what the note's doing. I can go ahead and click on here to move this around or I can use these buttons here. For the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and create like a pad. So I have a slow, I mean, pretty much we just need to drag this back a little bit and we got a nice pad. But you can potentially control the release. So it's gonna have kind of like a reverb tail uh, or we can mess with the sustain. So the sustain is gonna be, when it hits to this part, it's gonna go back down. Okay, so I'll bring that back up. Anyway, you get the idea. Attack, decay, sustain, release. This stuff is all pretty self-explanatory. I never know if I'm saying that word right. Anyway, we can map this and we're gonna talk about mapping in just a second. So I'm not really gonna show you an example of that yet, but you can map this to pretty much any point within the synth. We'll talk about that in a second. So let's go ahead and move on to our filter section. We can turn it on similar to how we do with the oscillators. So we have a bunch of different filter types that you can choose from. These are all fairly standard for synths. I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about all the different synth types you can kind of do go through that on your own time, but let me just kind of show you how this this filter works. So first of all, we have the 12 dB or the 24 dB uh, for like pads and stuff, I actually like the 24 dB and I can click directly on here and drag it like this, move it up and down, uh, or I can control, this controls the resonance. So the resonance adds this sort of like notch resonant frequency there. For pads especially, I probably want that at zero. And then this controls the cutoff of the filter. So for the pad, I probably want it somewhere in there. Now I can also drag it like this to make it a high pass filter instead of a low pass filter. Uh, but of course for this, I want the low pass filter. Now, one thing that I didn't mention in the oscillator section is that we do have uh, areas where this is linked to, it says like here, filter one. So I can click this and link this to a different filter um, or direct out effects, various options there. Now I can also do that in the filter here. So uh, here you can see it's highlighted to filter one. So I can turn that off and then it's bypassing it. I could turn on oscillator two, oscillator three, and SMP, which is the noise oscillator. So I can basically link all this stuff directly on the filter, or I can go directly on here and do it that way. It's kind of up to you. Now there's also a drive feature here, and this is just gonna add some subtle saturation. So depending on the preset or patch that you're creating, that may be something you wanna experiment with. Um, it, can, it can help boost the volume a little bit and you know, saturation adds some harmonics, so it can be a good, good thing to add there. Now the mix is going to change how much of, of basically the filter is, is on. So when it's 100%, it's filtering out 100% of the frequencies. You can see as I bring it back, more and more frequencies come in. So something to be aware of there. And then the key tracking controls, depending on what key I hit, uh, whether or not the filter is gonna open up or close. So if I bring this all the way up here to 100% and I play a lower note, it's gonna filter out more frequencies than if I play a higher note. And you can kind of see how it opens up there. And then I can do that the opposite way as well. So where if I play a higher note, it actually filters out more frequencies than if I play a lower note. And then, you know, I can go anywhere in between there. Go ahead and put that back to zero. We do have a second filter built in here, which pretty much works the exact same way. So uh, let's move on to our LFO section. So our LFO section is again, fairly standard. We have the ability to uh, pick between some different options here. Triangle is the default setting, and this is also the default setting for Serum. Now I can go in here and you know shape this like this. 
I can double click to add points. Uh, this works, if you've ever worked with Serum, I mean, it's, it's very similar to how that works. And we'll go ahead and start mapping this LFO to various things in the synth to uh, get some movement, get some modulation going on here. So I, when I click this and when I hover, uh, this is similar to how it works with Helm where it'll highlight green anything that I can map this to. So I could go down here and map this to the cutoff. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm getting a wobble. Let's say I wanted to change this to where it just opens up and then stays. I could move this to an envelope mode. Uh, I'll bring this more like that. Okay, and then I wanna bring this down a little bit. So it's opening up less. And I can change it here or I can change it up here. And then maybe I'll move this down a little bit. So that just adds an extra layer of movement as that synth opens up, as the pad opens up there. Sounds pretty nice. So let's go to our LFO2, and now we're back to our normal shape. Let's try mapping this to something else. Um, let me try mapping it to this. And by the way, one cool thing about this synth, if I bring this back, if I play a note, As I hover over various parameters on the synth, it kind of gives you a demo of what that's gonna sound like. It gives you the ability to test out what everything does within the synth a lot faster and a lot easier. Uh, so that's definitely a, a, a really cool feature of the synth in my opinion. So let's try mapping this to uh, actually the phase here. Now, one issue is that when you first map something, it's unipolar. So I'm, I'm actually gonna have to right click this and make bipolar in order for this to go both directions. Depending on what you want, you may may or may not need to do this, but if, if it's in unipolar, the problem that you run into is that the, the pitch fluctuation is going down to basically the note and then only above it. So the middle of that is actually sli slightly sharp or higher than the note that I want. So I, I wanna make sure that that's bipolar so that it's still the main pitch is in the center, if that makes sense. But there are cases where you may want unipolar. It's just something to be aware of there. Anyway, let's bring this down a little bit. We'll get a little tiny bit of pitch fluctuation there. And we could map another one to this here. Kind of gives a little bit of uh, uh, stereo panning effect going on. Not exactly panning, but just some movement in the stereo field. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, that's how you map stuff in the synth. Pretty straightforward. There are some different modes down here and you can also change the frequency. So the smoothing controls basically how much of this is going on. Uh, you can kind of see if I bring this all the way up. There's very little movement going on there. Whereas if I bring this down, you can see it going up and down all the way. and you can hear more of that pitch fluctuation. So the delay just controls the amount of time until the LFO kicks in. So I can bring this up. So I can play it and then it starts kicking in a little bit all the ways after. And then the stereo has kind of an interesting effect with like the, the bipolar. You can kind of see what's going on there. Now we also have a randomize feature down here. Let's go ahead and I'll, I'll show you kind of how this works. So if I wanted to actually, um, here, let me remove this. And how you remove something is by right clicking it. You can either bypass or you can remove like that. And I'm gonna add this random on it instead. Uh, so this is going to create more of a randomized pitch fluctuation there. You can kind of see what's going on here uh, and hear it as well. So again, let me make this bipolar. Cool. 
Again, we have a frequency, we have some different styles to choose from there. Over here, these are some more advanced features that I, I'm not really gonna go through in very much detail, uh, but you know, we have note, velocity, lift, octave note, pressure, slide, stereo, randomize. Um, so I'll let you kind of mess with these on your own time. Again, you can grab one and hover over any feature on the synth uh, to kind of get an idea of what it does. Moving on down here, we have a different amount of voices. So when this is set to eight, it basically means that I can play eight notes on the keyboard at the same time before it will stop. I, could, I, I can no longer, I couldn't play a ninth note at the same time. So if I brought this down to one, then I can only play one note at a time. If I try and play a chord, it'll just stop playing the first note and start playing the second note. So you can set that, you know, higher if you want more than eight voices. We also have a bend option. This controls how many semitones this pitch wheel or jog wheel is moving back and forth. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now we also have a velocity track knob, which is really, really handy. So if I turn this on, I can actually control uh, how hard I hit a note as to whether or not how loud it is. So if I hit it softly, well, here, let me bring this back to this. I'm gonna bypass this filter too, just so you can hear it a little bit better. So if I hit the note harder, it sounds louder. Really nice feature there that it's, it's really simple with just the click of a button there. Let me go ahead and unbypass this. So the spread controls the stereo spread. So I can turn it into mono if I want. And then we have a glide feature. So this controls, again, I'm gonna have to kind of take this off. Here, if I bring this down to one voice, you can hear it a lot better. So you can hear it, how it glides up and you can move this farther to have a, a, a slower glide. Uh, I can also change the slope there and then I can click always glide if I want it to glide every time I hit a note. Now one really cool feature of the synth that I haven't mentioned yet that I just wanna briefly mention before we move on to the effects tab is that if you go into your uh, wavetable here, I can right click this and I can go to text to wavetable and then I can type in something on here. Um, I actually have a bunch of different languages to choose from, which is really cool. So I'll just choose US English and let's type amazing. So now I have an amazing text wavetable. So let me actually bring this down an octave here. Amazing. Now the best way to utilize this is to go ahead and map an LFO to this here. Let me bring this to the, that position. Here, so let me actually bring this here. And I'll go ahead and amazing. Okay, so there we go. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And I can bring this to envelope so it just does it once. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. So really, really cool feature there. Now I think in the free version, you're actually limited to a certain amount of times that you can use this feature in this synth throughout the day. So uh, if this is something you think you're gonna be using a lot, then you may wanna consider getting the pro version. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the effects tab. We have nine different effects here. I can turn them on the same way I turn on the oscillators and the filters and everything in the synth. And I can also rearrange things wherever I want. I can also mute stuff this way if I wanna do that instead of completely taking it off like that. Um, so when I mute it, it still stays in the rack up here. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time explaining what every parameter of every effect and every knob does uh, within this module, cause that would just take too much time. But let me just kind of audition some of these effects for you, just so you can kind of get an idea of what they sound like. All these effects, in my opinion, are super high quality. They sound amazing. So let's listen to this. Amazing. Amazing. So I'm with the chorus, you know, I'm, I'm spreading it out. I'm making more voices. Let me try freezing this. Amazing. 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 So I can get sort of like a reverb effect just off this chorus. Amazing. 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 Anyway. You get the idea, I don't wanna to spend too much time messing with that. Our compressor is a multiband compressor. Um, I think this is similar to uh, how OTT is set up. So if you're familiar with OTT, you know, you got your up, upper threshold, lower threshold, um, and then you have your different bands over here. So you can kind of control the shape of the sound. Amazing, 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 amazing. 
amazing. Anyway, you get this sort of really nice, crisp, OTT-esque sound along with that compressor. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And we can just change the mix there to kind of blend how much compression we want. Let's move on to the delay. Delay is very standard. We have some different options here. Go to stereo or ping pong. I prefer ping pong delay, so I can change sort of the delay frequency or speed. Amazing, 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 amazing. I can change the feedback. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Mix amount. Amazing. Amazing. I can even go in here and change the um, filter. Amazing. So. Amazing. Kind of make like a high pass or low pass. Amazing. 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 And you can mess with these knobs there to kind of mess with that as well. Let's move on to distortion. We have a, a few different types of distortion, including a bit crusher. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. We also have a filter, so I can do pre. Amazing, 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 amazing. I can also do post. Amazing, 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 amazing. And I can mess with these there. We also have an EQ, pretty standard stuff here. The only thing you really need to know is that um, if I go like this, I can create a shelf, low shelf. Uh, but if I click on that, it turns into a filter. And then, you know, you have your basic resonance, cutoff, all standard stuff there. We have another filter. I'm not going to talk about this because this is literally the exact same as the other filter that we looked at in the voice section. So exact same features there. We have a flanger, which is nice. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. And you know, you can map any of these parameters. Uh, you can get super creative with these effects. We're really just scratching the surface with this stuff. Now we have a phaser, which is kind of similar to the flanger. Amazing, 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 amazing. amazing. Just kind of really messes up the phase. If you're listening on headphones, it can be a little disorienting. Uh, and then we have a reverb. So this reverb sounds really nice. We have a kind of a built-in filter here so I can filter out some of the low frequencies, some of the high frequencies, kind of hone this in exactly where I want it, which is really handy. I always really appreciate reverbs that give you the, that capability uh, because you can just get such a nicer sounding reverb with that. Amazing. Can change the time. Amazing. Controls like how long the decay is of the reverb. Amazing. Size. Amazing. Mix. Amazing. Amazing. Anyway, all standard features of the reverb, um, but this is a really great sounding reverb. Overall, just really great sounding effects. So the last thing I want to kind of touch on is the matrix section. This is where when you are creating your patch, you'll have, you know, all the stuff that's kind of mapped to various things will show up here. And I can also go in here and map various things. So if I want to change my macro controls, for example, I could map like a macro to, uh, you know, whatever I want compressor or something like that. Um, of course, my compressor is not on, so I'd have to turn that on. And then I could go back into my matrix section and change, you know, the attack, mix, release, whatever setting I want on the compressor there. And that way my macro will be linked to that. Of course, I can also just link the macro by dragging and, and setting different things. And the thing about the macros, so uh, one cool feature that you can use with the macros is I could potentially link you know, my macro one to multiple parameters within the synth. So when I move this knob, uh, then I have multiple things moving. And so I could automate this and get, you know, a really cool movement out of the synth. Um, another thing that it, it could be used for, what I've used it for in the presets that I'm giving away in this tutorial is um, just a, a place where you can quickly sort of change the sound. So for example, here, I'll, I'll add one of my presets. We'll just do like, uh, I don't know, big reverb. So this one I think controls the reverb. Anyway, kind of a cool feature there, just you know, makes it real easy for you to adjust the, the, the sound. So I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about in the synth. Let me know if you think I left anything out. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Also, if you're struggling with music production or if you're new to music production and you want one-on-one -on -one private lessons, I do offer one-on-one -on -one private lessons. You can sign up on my website. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to do that. I also have a Discord server. You can join that. I'll 
leave a link in the description for that as well. Every Sunday I do a live Q&A where I answer people's questions about production and about the music business in general. And that's every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely check that out if you're interested, if you have any questions about production. And I'll see you guys in the next video.